shopping for music gear today sometimes is like watching a sci-fi movie from the 80s. It's all about clones and replicants. And probably that's why I like it. You must be Xerxes. Especially the very cheap clones from a brand owned by a Swiss guy from China lead to enormous controversy among the YouTube music community. I can't absolve myself of having shamelessly exploited this effect for the growth of our channel. Besides, I have a lot of fun with the Beringer stuff. And believe me, designing a proper sound and making a track of it is and remains an art that is completely independent from the tone generator used. The main thing is that the object of desire means any sound at all. And the rest is imagination, creativity, diligence, know-how and sometimes even hard work to achieve a satisfying result. Of course, some might say craftsmen and technicians and a musician is that too are often only as good as their tools. But here in the home studio I would first invest in the basic things like interface, monitors, decent headphones and of course a computer and some software. Because that is the soil on which good sound can thrive in the first place. Sound generators, synthesizers are then only a matter of taste. Which you choose according to the depths of your wallet, your preferences, such as the style of music you intend to produce. Because actually it all works within a DAW, right? And if your wallet is deep enough or you simply have good friends who will lend you one of these, then you should also take a look at the upper end of the clone flagpole. And loosely based on the iconic science fiction author Philip K. Dick, we are of course no longer talking about vile clones, but about noble replicants. And Black Corporations, Xerxes, prides itself of being a representative of the species. But what is this replicant cult all about? In Philip K. Dick's novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep from 1968, which inspired Hollywood to the movie Blade Runner, we find ourselves transported to a dystopian world of 1992, where real flesh and blood pets are considered as a status symbol. And here we come to a detail that is most criminally concealed from us in the movie and why I don't specially like it, including the boring Vangelis music. Rick Deckard has a pet. For the love of his wife and because it is unhealthy in the long run to make the relationship dependent only on her Penfield mood organ, I'm curious when they finally clone it. Well, you know, and because he's a poor policeman, all he can afford is a cheap imitation electric sheep pretending to graze on the flat roof of his end times apartment block. And what does that do to his self-esteem? Sure, he wants more and gets gas on a real animal. After all, his neighbor has one too, even a real horse. And you can see how it all ends with Ridley Scott and the other Hollywood freeloaders, including the boring music by Vangelis. That's why I chose the Xerxes for my first Black Corporation test rather than Deckard's dream. And because I always thought that the LK syntax is pretty sharp. For me, it always was in the same league than the other great polis of the 80s. 
Unfortunately, even in the 90s, the syntax was quite rare and sought after. Also, not excessively expensive like others. Because he was quite a flop at first. The original rejection was based on the fact that Elka was an Italian manufacturer of entertainer organs and was therefore not taken very seriously in the synthesizer scene until a certain Monsieur Jarre made the syntax to his standard tool for his legendary laser harp. It had DCOs, which were infamous at the time and which as a technical innovation compared to the purely analog control VCOs, a means of tuning stability, are still rejected by analog Taliban till today. The connoisseur could remain silent until now and get the completely undervalued Roland JX-8P to float in similarly creamy spheres. And by the way, both synths complete each other perfectly. But the syntax and thus also the Xerxes can do much more than some of their contemporaries from Roland, Yamaha, Sequential and Co. at some crucial point. So let's get into some details. In addition to the four standard waveforms, each oscillator also has PWM, ring mod and PEM, which means pulse amplitude modulation, which is an absolutely unique feature of this synth. Even if it's not that spectacular in terms of sound, it sounds like this, for example. Oscillator sync with variable phase control. This is a special spice to make those cutting sync sounds. Then you get a multi-mode filter with two bandpass stages and of course a high pass. And this might be the coolest portamento section I've ever seen. The LFO section is very variable and cleverly solved. LFO range can be controlled up to 100 Hz. Okay, so without getting too deep into the details, let's check the Wine and Sun score. First, sound. The sound is clearly in the foreground of this unit. Since I know roughly what a syntax sounds like, I would rate the sound characteristics of the original as extremely well captured. That deserves a 19.5. Yeah. Second, ease of use and creativity. One switch or potentiometer for each function. Puristic operation in the style of the LK syntax. For system and patch parameters, there's a small display with simple menu navigation. Unfortunately, compared to the original, the sophisticated sequencer is missing and an arpeggiator is also not on board. 
one point deducted for this. Otherwise, a synthesizer module must be just as easy to use for me. By the way, a detailed manual is available in PDF format. For this, I get 19 points. Third, DAW compatibility and MIDI. No particular problems with the USB MIDI here like noise or excessive latency. It sends and receives MIDI controllers, the unit gets along with the environment from the start and can be easily adjusted via the small display. For me, it's 19 points. Quality and workmanship rather handcrafted. The synthesizer is made of painted steel and finished with nice looking wooden side panels. The switches are of high quality and precise. The pots, however, should feel a bit higher quality for a device in this price range. There's honestly no euphoria here and my first thoughts when I got the Xerxes out of the box was hey, where's my screwdriver? But we should not forget that this whole thing started as a do-it-yourself project. Apropos, a pair of rack ears are also included with the unit. So at this point, more or less average 16 points. If you like this video, leave us a fat filter screen by hitting the like button. 5. Price fun ratio. At just under 4000 euros, the issue is not entirely unproblematic. But on the other hand, this is a synthesizer that I enjoy very much because it is simply a classic tool without frills with an incredible sound. If it cost 2000, it would get the 20. So it's only a 17. Six. Cult factor and classic potential. Anyone who buys a Xerxes certainly knows what they are doing and has thought it through carefully. This is quite a sound specialist, which can certainly not be used in every track. But it's exactly this recognition factor that makes its character. And all this in new and reliable. I don't think that these units will appear on the second-hand market at a bargain price anytime soon. So here I'm also on the higher end with 19 points. All in all, this gives uh, Xerxes a wine and soon score of 18.25. I have to admit that this synthesizer picked me up right from the start and inspired me to produce. And at the end of the day, that's what counts. So I can recommend anyone who has the opportunity to test a synth from Black Corporation to do so. I might take a look at the Deckard's Dream now. And the Kijimi also makes a very exciting impression. Which one would you be most interested to be demoed on this channel? Just leave me a comment. By the way, I have the IC NIN. It's their upcoming Jupiter 8 replicant at the top of my synthesizer wishlist. And I was promised to get one as soon as they arrive in Germany. I'm really looking forward to that. But unfortunately, the ship shortage doesn't stop at small Japanese boutique manufacturers either. So it doesn't always have to be Behringer. But if they get comparable clones of these synthesizers on the track in the foreseeable future, as announced, it will certainly be very interesting comparison tests. In any case, the Black Corporation replicants have set a very high benchmark in terms of sound. That's it for today. My complete Xerxes demos are linked in the description. See you. Peace.